special meeting of the Westland City Council. It's Monday, April 22nd, 2024. Uh, and the first item of business is approval of the agenda. And we have a couple of modifications. I move to approve the agenda for the April 22nd, 2024 special meeting of the City Council with the following changes. Removal of item 4B, agenda bill 2024-04-1502, uh, decision for the Lady B tugboat, and adding a tree code discussion in honor of Earth Day. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the agenda with the following changes. Removal of item 4B, the agenda bill for the Lady B tugboat decision, and adding a tree code discussion in honor of Earth Day. Thank you, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, call the roll please, thank you. Councilor Bonington? Yes. Councilor Reich? Yes. Council President Baumgartner? Yes. Councilor Groner? Yes. Mayor Benostowski? Yes, thank you, the agenda's approved. Uh, that takes us to public comment. Do we have any there are none. speakers tonight? Okay, thank you, no public comment. Uh, that brings us to the business meeting. Uh, and the only item on there well, there's two items on there uh, based on what we just uh, amended with the TRECO discussion. So the first item is the deliberations of the appeal of the approval of a class two design review uh, to construct a new commercial building at 1919 slash 1949 Willamette Falls Drive. I see the parties are present. Welcome back, thank you. Uh, tonight we are going to deliberate on application number AP-24-01, an appeal of the Planning Commission approval of DR-2301 a class two design review for construction of a new commercial building at 1919 slash 1949 Willamette Falls Drive. The appeal was filed by Ian and Audra Brown. This is a quasi-judicial decision and the public hearing was closed uh, last Monday at the conclusion of the presentation of testimony. I will ask the city attorney to cover the preliminary legal matters again uh, tonight. So Mr. Monahan. Go ahead for the record, please. Thank you, Mayor. And we're, we're asking these questions related to legal matters about anything that's occurred since last meeting or any change that's occurred since the last hearing of Monday. So the first question is, do any members of the council wish to declare a potential or actual conflict of interest or a bias related to this matter? The record should, should reflect none. none. Thank you. And are there any ex parte contacts that any members wish to report or any site visits that have occurred since the hearing last week? The record should reflect none. Thank you. Thank you. So the question to the members of the audience is, does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the council to hear this matter? Not seeing any. Then the final question is, does any member of the audience wish to challenge a conflict of interest or impartiality of a member of the council or rebut or ask questions about the ex parte disclosures of any member of the council? And again, that's since last week, we haven't had any declarations of uh, ex parte contact with site visits. I see no challenges. More. That concludes the legal issues. Thank you. Uh, okay, well that the last item of this of the uh, script tonight is to deliberate. So I'm happy to open the floor up. I know uh, at the last council meeting, some councilors put out some uh, ideas for staff to research. Uh, so I don't know if anyone has a question of staff or if we, Mr. Floyd, do you have any new information to sh to share related to condition language, mm -hmm. or should we discuss first? <clears throat> So, so based upon feedback from the last meeting, staff did draft a, a potential condition. If council is interested in, in, in seeing that, um, that, that addresses some of the concerns. Or if council wants to deliberate first, we can respond to that further deliberation. It's, I'll leave it up in your hands. <laughs> so uh, so I, Councilor Bonington. I worked with him to develop some of the language in that earlier, um, just so that we'd have a good starting place from what to work with. So I think it would be best if we heard what he's come up with and then we can discuss if it's something we want to change or. It sounds good. Well, okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Floyd. Yeah, so but what we heard from council last week is that there are themes of uh, stronger enforceability language um, in terms of decoupling it from, from an enforcement requirement necessarily and also making sure that it's, it's actionable and so in terms of, you know, making sure that we can require the applicant to 
to sort of uh, to, to make improvements to the building if they're required. Uh, we also took into account some of the feedback provided by both parties as well. Um, I'll just go ahead and actually pass this out if that's okay, uh, just to make it easier, and then I'll read it into the record and I'll provide copies to the thank you to the applicant. So and appellant. So. Yeah, so what, what you'll see is that the top, the black uh, text, is what the plan commission approved. Then there's a track changes version, and then there is a uh, clean version. And in looking at this, uh, the condition would be revised to say, the applicant shall submit a noise study prepared by a licensed professional engineer as part of the first tenant improvement application for an eating and drinking establishment. We, we tied it to that land use because that appeared to be the one type of land use where, where, where people had the most concern. And it was easier to identify than 50% occupancy or, or something like that. Uh, it goes on to say the noise study must identify and evaluate potential impacts that would violate the provisions of Wesley Municipal Code Chapter 5.487 Section 3 and, and identify those mitigation steps necessary to avoid noncompliance. Design mitigations recommended in the noise study to address identified impacts shall be constructed with a tenant improvement and could include, but not be limited to, signage, physical barriers, and follow-up studies. And so I think this is, we, we feel that this is more focused and that it gets to the actual land use of, of which there seems to be the most concern. Um, it, 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 it specifies the noise study has to be prepared, has to be prepared by a licensed professional engineer. Um, it, requires the applicant to prepare a noise study and based on modeling, you know, evaluate potential impacts and actually, and, and if, if additional screening would be required or additional mitigation such as signage to keep people, you know, mindful of the neighbors to install that prior to getting final inspection of, of, the, of that tenant improvement. Um, and so, and that it does, this, it also provides a little, some direction to future staff, uh, be it um, planning staff, code enforcement, or, or the city judge, in terms of intent, because it says uh, the, um, the potential mitigations could be, it, it provides sample mitigations, such as signage, barriers, or, um, or follow-up studies. And so um, there, there was, the previous condition did Include a requirement for for up to you know for a you know for a yearly um, for, you know, for, for for up to one study per year if there is a complaint filed. The um, that was to address any potential future issues. Um, the applicant did say that's they had concern about due process rights. In terms of that, they wanted the chance to raise their hand and and say perhaps you know. So, so some investigation should be allowed before they're required to spend money on, on a study. Um, in looking at the code, the code really talks about follow-up studies within a year of the first approval. So that ongoing condition is a little, is, is a little um, may, may be a little bit harder to enforce. Um, I, I did also speak to the code enforcement staff about their procedures about what happens when, when, when there's a noise violation. And so um, speaking to code enforcement staff, they said, the moment they receive a complaint on their uh, the police uh, line, they send an officer out as soon as possible, and the officer determines whether or not a noise violation is actually valid. And so, if council wants to retain language about follow-up studies, council may want to include language about about a valid noise complaint to make sure it's it's verified. Uh, they also said they t you know they typically start with a warning first before they move to citation, and they try and resolve it. Um, through a warning, similar to traffic violations, people get warnings. So I think um, staff felt this was a little bit um, cleaner and easier to enforce and creates more ex uh, a clearer expectation of the applicant. And it, and it really ties the expense of the noise study to an eating and drinking establishment, which seems to be the real crux of the concern. Um, but I'll turn it over to questions at this time. So. Any, question, any questions? I have a couple, but I'll open the floor up. Council President and then Councilor Groner. 
Do we have any idea of what the cost, the average cost of a noise study is? I, I, I couldn't say, okay. unfortunately. The, 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 the applicant might, might be able to address that. Councilor Groner. Yeah, uh, it says, as part of first tenant improvement application. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could clarify that? Is that when it's in operation or just when the paperwork yeah, is so filed? So, yeah, basically if, if, you know, the building is not going to be, so as, as represented, there are no, are, there are no specific um, tenants occupied for each of the different spaces. I'm thinking when an applicant comes in to install, um, you know, kitchen improvements, you know, uh, burners, hoods, you know, all, all the various improvements you make with a restaurant use that, you know, that a building permit would be required. And at that point, planning staff would, requ would review that and require the noise study to be provided as part of that. So It seems to me a noise study wouldn't be very valid until the restaurant or bar is in actual operation. I, I, I understand that. So, so it, it, would be, it would be based upon modeling and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and their professional estimation. But, okay. yeah, so it's, it's, it's a... It, it, it does provide for a study up front, but the, the, the code also requires noise studies prior to, prior to, to approval by the Planning Commission, potentially. And, and that earlier in the code, if, if city staff determined that, that there's the possible, or the decision maker determines that there's a possibility for noise impacts, the city has the authority to require a noise study. Staff did not require one with the application because we felt this was not dissimilar to other land uses in the area, but since the since some of the neighbors have expressed this concern, um, staff felt that, that 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 applying this condition would be reasonable because if the applicant does choose to move forward with with, with a restaurant use um, at that time, they would be required to spend the money on that on that noise study. Thank you. Thank you. Is yeah. one of one of the concerns that I have is kind of similar to Councilor Groner. Um, is there a way to Add in a, some sort of requirement that the, the noise study be done while the thing is the rooftop is occupied by such establishment because I I am, you know. Yeah. That is that is a concern that you know that could generate the, the noise that is pr generated from a study mm -hmm. up front could be different than the noise that ex is experienced mm -hmm. later when that, it's actually in operation. That's absolutely that, that, that's something we could do. You could say within one year of occupancy, the app, you know the 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 applicant would have to would have to present like a follow up study, for example, that would evaluate the actual noise impacts. The first study would be the estimated, and then there could be a follow up study, um, and that's something that we could add a, a, um, an additional sentence to address that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm mindful of the the cost, you know, yeah. but I, I also think that that's what I'm struggling with is that. <laughs> The code talks about businesses or activities that can be expected to generate noise in excess of the noise code. But mm -hmm. then we're at this time we don't know, on the evidence, what actually was, will go in there. So I'm trying that. to just figure out a way to make sure to protect yeah. that element and make sure it's mitigated appropriately. Yes. That makes um, sense. Um, Councillor Bonington has, and I do. So I would support adding in a sentence about just the ability to do a follow-up noise study or okay. require one, if from from the city perspective. I had the same concern, um, Go ahead, Council. which is something I, I addressed and asked why, why would we do a noise study beforehand if no one's in there? That, that's completely useless. Well, it turns out it's, it's actually not. Um, the, the engineers would come in and since they're magicians or scientists, they have a way of estimating how loud things will be from various areas. They have tools they can use to simulate these things. Um, and they can propose what sort of mitigation would prevent those before it ever becomes a problem. So it's sort of a preventative measure to require this noise study and um, the suggestions that, that the engineers will come up with as opposed to waiting until it becomes an issue and, and having to conduct another one. And then they're already established as a tenant and we, we don't really have much control at that point um, to really force these, these changes. So doing it... Uh, proactively seems like actually a good idea now that I understand it better. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Uh, any other comments on, on Council President, go ahead. I was just curious what, if any, requirements were um, made to the food cart um, establishment? Yeah, there, there, there were none required at that time. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and so, sorry, to, one, one other comment. On, on the list of what could be included in the uh, barriers, I would just like to add a couple of things, just to, from, mm -hmm. uh, from my, this would be a proposal for me. Um, plantings and noise reduction acoustic equipment would be a couple of specific things that could, should be explored, in my opinion, if, if, if the study determines that it's necessary. Um, is everybody comfortable with those two uh, potential ad additions to the list, just for specificity? Um, so, and it doesn't sound like we reached a consensus on whether to include a language related to a potential additional study. Um, that's something I, if, if needed, but I don't know how people feel about that. Councilor Bond, it seems to you feel maybe not necessary because, and I certainly understand that the first one is they can model and, and such, and there's an element of good faith in, in the mm -hmm. process for sure. Um, but. If we're comfortable, if council's comfortable with the language, then, then the language can be ap approved. So, okay. Well, someone can <coughs> make a motion then. Uh, should, at this time, should we ask any party whether they have any comments on the condition? I know that's traditional. Only uh, if you're willing to open up the public hearing. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, um, <laughs> does any, uh, well, should, uh, I feel like I'm opening up the can, <laughs> but. Uh, if you open up the public hearing, you're going to need to allow for um, public comment as well as the usual rebuttal. And then you may end up going into deliberations again. So I'm just. You're, st you're stating. Outlining your, your options. Okay, if anyone wants to speak. Okay, um, well, I guess the question that I have for the audience is does anybody have a a, a specific a, a objection to the condition um, that, that they would like to put into the record. Um, so, so uh, I don't, seeing none, so we will just, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I move. They have a, oh. That's true. Oh, I thought yeah, did we? That's fair. On the table. Well, could you come speak into the microphone, please? Thank you, just so the record catches so, up. Mayor, so, Mayor, rather than do that, perhaps what we should do is take a short break and have language developed that's okay. based on what you've just given as input so we can have that finalized and show that. Okay, that yeah. would be great. We'll, we'll take a, a five minutes. Ten. Uh, suffi ten, ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes sufficient. Okay, we just want to make sure everybody's rights are protected. Thank you. Thanks. We'll take a short recess. Dean, we'll wait for staff to give the signal. We have a thumb up from the TVC TV. Great. Uh, so we will uh, reconvene the deliberations uh, after a 13 minute recess. Um, okay, so we have a new condition. Mr. Floyd, would you like to detail uh, what was, what you, what changes you made? And then we can take it, make a decision. Absolutely, so um, the noise study, uh, actually, how about I just read it, how about I just read it into the record? Go ahead. So we do that, and then so, uh, it says for the noise study uh, condition 10, the applicant shall submit a noise study prepared by a licensed professional acoustical engineer as part of the first tenant improvement application for an eating and drinking establishment that takes into consideration the use of the rooftop deck for activities associated with the establishment. The noise study must identify and evaluate potential impacts that could violate the provisions of Wesley Municipal Code Chapter 5.487 and identify those mitigation steps necessary to avoid noncompliance. Design mitigations recommended in the noise study to address identified impacts shall be constructed with a tenant improvement and could include but not be limited to signage, physical barriers, plantings, noise reducing acoustical equipment, and follow-up studies. Subsequent to the first study, the applicant shall submit a follow-up study within one year of occupancy of the eating and drinking establishment to be taken during a period of peak occupancy during evening business hours. So the changes include, um, from, the, from the earlier revisions, 
um, clarifying that, that an, an acoustical engineer must submit the study and not just any engineer. So make sure it's not someone who's unqualified. Um, the changes also include a broader range of potential mitigations, as, as um, suggested by, by yourself, uh, to include um, plantings, noise reducing acoustical equipment, and follow up studies. Um, there, there's also a change, it, the last sentence is new, that says um, after the first study, the applicant shall submit a follow up study within one year of occupancy of the eating and drinking establishment to be taken during the period of peak occupancy during business hours. So it just says you have to do a follow-up study within a year, and it has to be done during the evening, which is when people are most likely to be home and potentially impacted. Um, I think also, too, the first sentence is clarified to focus the study on rooftop deck activities and not just any activity of the restaurant. It's focused specifically on the rooftop. So. Okay, thank yeah. you, thank you, Mr. Floyd. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion at this time. I move to make a tentative decision to deny the appeal of AP-24-01 and uphold the Planning Commission approval of DR-23-01 with the following modifications as listed um, in the noise study exception, or, or condition rather and direct the staff to bring back findings for adoption on a date yet to be determined. It'd be Monday, actually. Yeah. It has to be Monday. So. Uh, well, it has to be made, uh, sorry, April 29th. On, uh, for adoption on April 29th, 2024. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, to make a tentative decision to deny the appeal of AP-24-01 and uphold the Planning Commission approval of DR-23-01 with the following modifications uh, as listed um, in the condition that related to the noise study uh, and direct staff to bring back findings for adoption on April 29th, mm -hmm. 2024. Uh, any discussion? Happy to, Councilor Bonington, go ahead. Uh, Mike. Oh, hello. Uh, I felt that uh, before we, we vote on this, it's important to just clarify um, how this is being decided to make sure it's it's transparent um, and, and summarized properly. It's important to remember this is a quasi-judicial hearing, which means we're only making decisions based on the rules, the laws we've established within our code to make these decisions, nothing else. Um, that, that may be for better or worse. If, if people have objections to that, it, it may be a good opportunity to revisit changes in code. Um, I've heard the frustrations of the Historic Review uh, Committee, and I would suggest that rather than um, walking away from it, it's a fantastic opportunity to change the rules there from within. Um, but as I can see, the process has been followed as prescribed from originating with the Historic Review Committee to the Planning Commission, back to the Historic Review Committee, and then the Planning Commission again, and now to us. I have not heard a persuasive argument that there was another way that that should have been handled based on any code or process. Um, looking at the application and the, the appeals for it, uh, the conditions really are satisfied within, within the, the code. Um, the definitions of human occupancy, the height requirements, all of that are within the legal definitions. Um, I, I can't see anything within the law that we are required to make this decision on that would make me think we, we need to um, address anything but this uh, noise issue.
In, any other comments from council? I'll just add that you know this, these hearings are a time when we have to do a difficult task, which is balance property rights uh, with livability concerns. And I feel that this condition that we just um, wordsmith today hopefully addresses the concerns of neighbors and ensures that a proper noise study will be done and potentially follow up one if needed, uh, and that there's those protections um, so that folks are, you know, don't have to live with noise that violates our code. And I just want to appreciate the professionalism and courtesy that both the parties, applicants and appellants, uh, demonstrated and members of the public as well in, in this process. So thank you for your professionalism and I think everybody conducted themselves appropriately and great during the process. So with that, uh, I would call the question. Councilor Reich? Yes. Councilor President Baumgartner? Yes. Councilor Groner? Yes. Councilor Bonington? Yes. Mayor Bielostowski? Yes. Thank you. So the uh, motion passes, and we will, uh, as a follow-up, I assume have to convene a qu very short meeting to adopt the final decision and order on the 29th based on the decision we just made to comply with the clock, 120-day clock. Uh, so we will, uh, as a housekeeping matter, is everybody or a quorum of council available at that time on Monday? Maybe, do you want a time certain? Definitely. Okay, okay. Uh, is this time good for everybody? Yes. So, okay, so we will schedule a special meeting for the 29th at 6 p.m. Uh, should be a quick one just to adopt a, f a final decision in order. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Floyd, for uh, your su support as staff during this process as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, that takes us to the next agenda item uh, in honor of Earth Day, the council president requested that we discuss the uh, tree code for a moment. Uh, and this was something that kind of, council president and I had a meeting with Greg Smith. Thank you everybody, have a good night by the way. Uh, and we'll be, be in touch. Um, just give a minute to let the council chamber clear, excuse me. So th this was a last minute addition to the agenda that Council President and I talked about. Uh, we had a meeting with Greg Smith of the Sustainability Advisory Board talking about the tree code and had a, just a, wanted to talk about it for a moment today. So I'll turn it over to Council President. Uh, and happy Earth Day, everybody. Thank you, Mayor. And um, I also wanted to thank all of the time the Sustainability Advisory Board dedicates to this topic um, and a especially appreciate their valuable um, service on Earth Day. And I did want to bring this up because it's something the Sustainability Advisory Board has been asking the city to do, um, which is review the tree code. And there had been concerns about it triggering a review that would be costly for staff time and, and not feasible. And I've recently heard that that may not be the case. And so what I would ask is if we could, um, with consensus with council, if they agree, um, ask the staff to look into whether or not this could be done without triggering this process that's too costly to do it. Because there's been a lot of interest and in, in talk from the community input about tree code and concern for saving trees. And we are a tree city, after all. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Any, any thoughts from Council or City Manager? I know this wasn't on the agenda, but we're not asking you to, we wouldn't be asking you to take an, take an action that would require you to do the work, just, expl just explore at this time whether the work, whether this could be done without a goal five process. And perhaps it could be, uh, put on the planning docket as a priority project if, if it's determined that um, it can be done. Sure, it, uh, thank you, Mayor, Council President. Um, I know the project is on the planning docket. It sounds like maybe there's some new information or a new scope that might be a little different from what 
we've talked about before, so I'm happy to learn. If I should talk to Mr. Smith, I, I, I will reach out to him. Darren yes. and I will learn more. Thank you. Um, he did indicate that using the city of Milwaukee as an example, that they were able to make changes to their tree code successfully without triggering the review process. So he had asked if maybe we could consider whatever process they were able to do, if we could do that. Thank you. Councilor Bonington, go ahead. Um, I, I think it's, it's worth mentioning that uh, from, from my real estate experience, tree code is often considered about as complicated as rocket science. That's, that's a, a common comparison that we make. If, if something comes up regarding tree code, we absolutely do not want uh, to give advice on it uh, from our, our positions. Um, I would think it would be really, really amazing if not only we could do that, but work towards having a tree code that we're, we're not even in this position where it is so uh, uh, ominous to, to make a modification to because it is really that complicated, understandably, but I just wonder if we could simplify it. Yes, uh, agreed. I think that the big expense for the city was is from this goal five process with Met, that involves Metro and Department of Land Conservation Development and would require a lot of expense and staff time, but researching whether it's possible to amend without doing that, I think is a worthwhile endeavor just to explore that. Um, and I had one question on the planning docket. Are we going to approve that at some point, or is it kind of just, uh, was it amended at the meeting? Uh, I didn't know if we need to schedule that for a future meeting to adopt, or if it's just, was amended as, at that work session. I didn't know what the. That's a great question. I'll have to refresh my memory and get back to you on that one. Uh, okay. I, I suspect it needs to come back. I think so. I think so too. I think we were going to bring it back, so okay. we can do that, and then perhaps at that time when we adopt the plan docket, this can be uh, discussed formally. So, thank you. Anything else for the good of the order tonight um, from council? Uh, I, I will just comment that. We will have five meetings this month on Mondays. I think that might be a record. The, f the fifth Monday, we usually only do three, uh, and this month we'll have every, there's five Mondays in April, and we will be meeting on the Mondays. So thank you everybody for your service. Uh, so with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.